canvas, dropping off some paperwork, and I was telling one of the office ladies that I was going to be here with you guys today. She said, oh, Miss Tessa, what are you going to tell your teachers? And I looked at her with a straight face, and I said, I'm probably going to tell them to get into a different profession. <laughs> <laughs> and she left, she's like, hi, Miss Tessa, don't wear a back high shirt. <laughs> before I started teaching it still today, as Devin mentioned, and so I want to start with some bad advice, because um, there's certainly bad advice out there. So one of the worst pieces of advice I received before teaching was, don't smell before Christmas. A lot of people told me that. I think it's important to be strict and have rules, but you can smile as loud here. Um, and the second, someone told me, if you want to professionalize the education field, and you need to wear a suit, you need to dress to impress. So there I am, first day of school in a suit, mostly because I was 22 and looked younger than I do now, if you can believe that. And I teach high school, so I wear a suit, and I think to this day, all my colleagues in my hallway still make fun of me. They're like, why did you do that? No one wears suits. It's okay. Like, these guys wear suits. We don't wear suits. You don't have to wear a suit. Um, uh, the other bit of advice was I had this deep-rooted belief that I needed to teach my students how to shake hands properly, right? Like that's the gateway to like all opportunities in life and you need to know how to shake hands. And I still believe that it's important to greet kids at the door every day, absolutely. But the handshaking thing, I abandoned quickly, mostly because every year I got the flu. Um, and then this last year, year seven, I was like, you know what, I am busy. I do not have time for this, so I shook no hands. And I don't, math people, I don't mean to, you know, draw a correlation without causation, but no flu, okay? No flu this year. Um, and on that note, I have kind of a, the most embarrassing thing that happened to me my first day teaching was the very first kid that ever walked in my door, I stick out my hand to shake their hand, and I was so nervous that I said, hi, welcome, my name's Melina. Oh, so I did not use my teacher name, so I was from that point decided hand, well, hand shaking was going to have to go. Excuse me. Um, but I'm going to go now into some good advice. Um, I think the best advice I can give you is to befriend the office staff. They are the ones that run the school, and the sooner you befriend them, the easier your life will be. Uh, two, uh, learn to make your own coffee in the morning. I learned this from a retired coach um, and my father, who told me I could not afford in dollars or pounds to go to Starbucks every morning, which is true. So, and you're going to need coffee, okay? So you need to start to make that at home. My third bit of advice I actually learned from a child of someone in this room. Um, about this time last year, I saw that I had the Morris Principles son on my roster, and I was like, oh great, I'm going to have to behave this year. plays in my class. And so, um, it turns out he's an awesome kid, we had a really great relationship, and I saw Mr. McClenny in the spring, and he came over to me and said, hey, Ms. Russell, like, Dylan loves your class, he's talking about college, he's like, oh, nice, I don't it. Typical, like, parents, you know, teacher exchange, and then he said, you know what Dylan said, he loves you, he said that you're fair. He said you're fair. So my third bit of advice that I learned from Dylan McClenney is you need to have the same rules every day for every kid. Same rules every day for every kid. This last bit of advice I'm going to tell you a little bit of a story about before I became a teacher. I was in a training probably around this time of year and there was someone with a slide up and it had a calendar. It said, okay guys, this is how you're going to feel. And I was like, who's this guy? And he said, okay, August, blur. September, and start to settle down and then October. At the time, we didn't have any school holidays in October, which since have changed and crazy. But we had no school holidays in October, and that's when reality starts to set in, right? Like, there's no more get to know you games, you're reading the books, you're doing the equations, and kids are like, wait, I don't like school, I remember now. And so things start to get very real at that time, and this presenter was like, you're going to question everything in October. And I was like, man, you don't know me. I am positive. Like, don't tell me how I'm going to feel. And then I got to October, and I was, I'm an overachiever. So I got to November, and I remember, I have to talk about my fourth period class. So everyone's going to get one. It's like a welcome to the family, have a nice day kind of thing. You will all get this class. At a fourth period class, I was 22, the fourth period class of senior retesters. I'm going to let you use your imagination for the eclectic nature of that group. Um, I had anywhere from 18, 19 to 20 year olds. I'm 22. That's what I'm hearing, right? Um, but she just loves me, so I had lunch right after the lunch. <laughs> and I was sitting there in November, and I was reflecting on my life choices. And I think I was talking to myself. Like, I was in a bad place. I was like, man, I'm kidding. I'm so nice. I work so hard. Like, what? Hey, hey. Like, it was like a bad moment. I was like, 
I should have done this other job. Why did I do it? Like, it was a bad place. And I remember going to a team meeting with some of my coworkers. I was like, I don't know what to do. I feel like I've tried everything. This class is driving me crazy. I think they hate me. And I will never forget because one of my coworkers turned to me and he said, Melina, you can't say them all. There are weeds in every garden. And I went home and I thought about that. And I thought about if that's what I wanted to believe. And if that's what I thought was true of kids. And that didn't sit well with me. So I contacted another mentor and they gave me a book about behavior management called Love and Logic. I know you guys have a copious amount of time on your hands, so feel free to read it. Um, I'll follow that up. I'm an English teacher. I'm going to give you the Spark Notes version. Because, yeah, read it. Um, kids read books. I believe that. Okay, so uh, big takeaways from Love and Logic number one. Building relationships is the best form of behavior management. That is just true. That is not my opinion. That is not, like, that's just true. Um, and so I learned this when I went to teacher of the year this past year. The person in charge, the vice principal in charge of discipline, came into my room and he said, I've never gotten a referral from you. The person in charge of discipline before that, Laura Williams, uh, she to one time asked me after my last referral, she has, no, anyway. So she said, Melina, has a kid ever cussed you out? I was like, no. That's impressive. Put that on your resume. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's really true. Building relationships is the best form of behavior management. And the other big takeaway is it's not about you. It's not about you. And that was really hard for me because I would sit there after my fourth period eating alone at my desk. And I was like, oh, what am I doing? I must be so boring. I'm messing up. I'm bad at this. Me, me, me. I, I, I. And then I decided after I read this book. So I read this book and I decided when a kid had their head down or any time that I had the urge to redirect or take a kid outside and talk to them or God towards one, DF or whatever the system is at your school, I would instead go over, I wouldn't make a big scene, I would get on their level and I would ask them if they were okay. Are you having a bad day? Three quick things kids have told me when I've done that before, kids with their heads down. I was working the late shift at Waterburger. I didn't get home till 4. I have a baby at home. She was very fussy last night. My dad just died. I'm having a hard time dealing with it. These are things that I never would have known. And I would have punished a child in some way, big or small, because of things that had nothing to do with me. It wasn't about me. I wasn't boring. I wasn't doing a bad job. Kids are people before they are students. And the day that I started to treat them as such was transformational for my time in the classroom. The other thing, this is on a lighter note, if a kid is throwing a fit because they, you are not letting them go to the bathroom, there is a 100% chance their significant other is in the hallway threatening to break up with them. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. 